This is your Adventist News, a service of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and I'm Stanley Fillor. Coming up in this week's broadcast, the conference prepares for upcoming hurricane season. A noted Seventh-day Adventist musician dies. Secondary school holds virtual graduation. These stories and more on this week's Adventist News. Thanks for joining us for this week's Adventist News. Last year, two of the islands in the northern Bahamas, namely Abaco and Grand Bahama, experienced what is said to be the worst hurricane in the history of the Bahamas, Hurricane Dorian. These islands slowly rebuilt after this tragedy. The South Bahamas Conference and countless agencies and individuals provided and distributed food, clothing, and monetary assistance in the wake of the disastrous storm. In preparation for this year's hurricane season, the Disaster Preparedness and Relief Committee of the South Bahamas Conference, along with its administration led by its president, Kenny DeVoe, has enlisted conference workers and laypersons from throughout the territory in a plan of action. Pastor DeVoe said that committees have been formed in the areas of transportation, rapid response, distribution and education, etc. A part of the distribution team are the Pathfinders and Master Guides, and the conference is in communication with the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and working closely with ADRA, the Adventist Development Relief Agency, which has established a Bahamian arm of the agency to provide more immediate assistance. ADRA has made available survival kits that could be used in the aftermath of another hurricane. A musical giant in the Seventh-day Adventist Church will be laid to rest this Sunday, June 21st. Elder Raymond Antonio's musical career was vast and varied throughout the Bahamas. In the community, he served as an accompanist for the College of the Bahamas and the University of the Bahamas Choir, the High Grove, Renaissance Singers, and assisted in the music department at the Christ Church Cathedral. Within the Adventist community, Uncle Ray will be greatly missed. As a minister of music at the Bethany Seventh-day Adventist Church, as well as church musician, elder, youth and adult Sabbath school teacher, and he has touched many lives. Raymond's contribution to the Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, later to be known South Bahamas Conference, as well as the wider Adventist community is extensive and commendable. Sadly, Raymond died on Sunday, May 31st, 2020. He survived by his wife, Terry, daughter, Thea, his father, Philip Antonio, sisters, Lynn Smith, and Terry Antonio, along with other family members and friends. Our deepest condolences are extended to the family. You can view the service, which will be streamed live on the South Bahamas Conference YouTube channel on Sunday, June 21st at 10 a.m. The link will be available on our social media platforms. The secondary division of Bahamas Academy held its graduation exercise this year online. Parisha Ferguson has more on this story. Bahamas Academy held a ceremony for their secondary graduates on Thursday the 18th of June via a virtual service on Zoom. Although separated because of the virus, the students were still able to come together and share their experiences on how Bahamas Academy has impacted and molded them into the persons they are today. The charge to the students was brought to the graduates by Dr. Keith Major, who reminded them that their future isn't in front of them, but inside of them. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Every single business that you see was started with an idea in somebody's head. And so I'd like to say to you this morning that your future, graduates, is not ahead of you, your future is inside you. What is bothering you? What is encouraging you? What is it you're thinking about? Look inside you. Inside you is where you find your purpose and your passion and your drive, but you have to dig for it. Everything that is valuable, you have to dig for. Why do you think gold is valuable? Because you have to dig for it. 
Why are diamonds valuable? Because you have to dig for it. Why is oil valuable? Because you have to dig for it. Well, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so if you dig within you, you will find, you will find the answers to the future. The valedictorian Jalicia Williams took us for a walk down memory lane as she spoke about their experiences throughout their tenure at Bahamas Academy. Salutorian Natavia Mackey expressed her gratitude to the parents, administrators, and teachers for supporting them all the way. As the virtual experience came to an end, the 45 students were officially declared the 2020 secondary school graduates of Bahamas Academy. The graduating class named Supreme is quite fitting as they have endured the challenges of COVID-19 and were successful in bringing their high school education to a grand completion. We want to wish them all the best as they continue to strive for excellence. This has been Parisha Ferguson for the SBC Media Network. For information on these events and more, visit our conference website at southbahamasconference.org where you can view the news as well as various programming and read the weekly logos. Please stay tuned. We'll have your upcoming events after this short break. When the surge came in, it was like towards our roof and we had to, we had to leave the apartment. And we were just hanging outside for like almost 48 hours. The water was up to our feet. Annie put us up on the counter. Then the water is coming up to the counter, so she put us up on the fridge but then the fridge ended up floating away. My business went under six feet of water. It was catastrophic for me. After the storm, the water was contaminated. That's a notice that we got from our government or the water company. We were told that we couldn't bathe with the water, we couldn't consume the water. So we come here to refill our waters to, so we can be able to bathe with clean water, we can be able to consume the water. The water table was challenged from the hurricane and so even now five months later, it is still challenged. One of the things we've been engaged in, in terms of making sure that we've been able to provide portable water from a reverse osmosis system. I volunteer for Water Mission. I actually manage this facility, this water plant right here. Water Mission has partnered with ADRA to provide this facility here. In operating this, this water plant, we actually pull from a freshwater well that the utility company has provided us. And we run it through uh, two separate filters, or rather three filters, in order to take out the sediment and the, the salt that's in the water. And then once we've done that, we then chlorinate the water and we place it in the bladder that's behind me. This facility can produce for us daily uh, 12,000 gallons. Every day we provide uh, fresh, safe drinking water to all the schools. So we, we provide probably about uh, 20, 20 plus schools here in Grand Bahama with fresh, safe drinking water. It's like a blessing from God to have the water here. Because of the contamination, we don't want to get sores or we don't know what it would do. So for this, this is just a blessing for us. ADRA has been a huge uh, a supporter of what Water Mission does here in Grand Bahama and in the Bahamas as a whole. We're here until the, the need is done. In terms of being able to help persons here, we build their lives back again. Welcome back to your Adventist News. Coming up in the South Bahamas Conference, the Bible class for the South Bahamas Conference continues this Sunday, June 21st at 6.30 p.m. sharp with guest presenter and theologian, Dr. Jonathan Paulian. This week's instruction will be on the open remnant. The best is yet to come. These sessions have been very exciting and you can connect also on the YouTube link on the South Bahamas Conference website where you can ask your questions as well. 
The Good News Church continues their Healthy and Wealthy Living Lecture Series via Zoom on Monday, June 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Guest speaker will be Kevin Demerit, External Relations Officer at the Central Bank of the Bahamas. Mr. Demerit will be presenting on the sand dollar digital currency and elimination of the one cent coin. Please see the conference website for login information. Diabetes is a metabolic disease that causes blood sugar to be high. If blood sugar is too high for too long, it can cause several health issues such as damage to vessels that supply blood to a vital organ, heart disease, stroke, or vision problems. Therefore, the body creates a hormone called insulin, which is produced by the pancreas. It helps to move sugar from the blood into cells to be stored or used for energy. When the body doesn't produce any or enough insulin, there is excess sugar in the blood which can be life-threatening. There are two kinds of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 involves the pancreas being able to produce little or no insulin and type 2 involves the blood not being able to respond to insulin as well as it should. Symptoms of diabetes include weight loss, increased thirst, frequent urination, extreme fatigue, blurry vision, slow healing wounds. A person with diabetes should eat food like leafy greens, chia seeds, turmeric, nuts, and should avoid foods like sugar sweetened beverages, white bread, pasta and rice. Foot issues are common in people with diabetes. Even a small cut can produce serious consequences. Diabetes may cause nerve damage that takes away the feeling in your feet. It may also reduce blood flow, making it hard to heal an injury or resist infection. Make sure to inspect your feet daily. Moisturize feet daily but never between the toes. Never walk barefoot. Wear clean, dry socks and shake out your shoes and feel inside before wearing. This has been Patrick Wilson with your health tip, courtesy of Adventist Television. And remember, God wants us to prosper and be in good health. We go now to our news feature from around the world with the Adventist News Network. On Sabbath, June 27, the leadership of the Adventist Church in North America is asking its members, churches, ministries, and services to join in a special day of prayer for the deep hurt and frustration that racial injustice and iniquity have caused. As the conversations on racism in society and in the church continue to grow, they are urging the 1.2 million church members in the territories of Bermuda, Canada, Guam, Micronesia, and the United States to come together and prayerfully seek God's guidance and leading. The prayer will specifically address how people relate to one another and how to help stop injustice against people of color. The leadership of the NAD said, we want to ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and ears so we may understand and listen to our brothers and sisters, specifically the Black American community, as they share the pain and anger they have experienced over the years. We want to ask for forgiveness, and we want to ask for compassion and strength to have the tough yet necessary conversations so our church can move forward in healing the wounds that run deep in our faith community. By coming to God in prayerful surrender to him, we can become the church God wants us to be to reach out to those hurting in all our communities. For more information, you can visit nadadventist.org. That brings us to the end of our Adventist news from the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Please feel free to share what is happening at your church by sending us your news stories and upcoming events. Feel free to email them to sbcadventistnews 
at gmail.com. To view a rebroadcast of the Adventist News along with other programming or to keep in touch with what's happening in our conference, please visit and subscribe to the conference website, southbahamasconference.org, our YouTube channel, and our Facebook and Instagram pages. On behalf of our production team of the Adventist Television Channel 658, have a happy Sabbath, and thank you for watching this week's broadcast. I'm Stanley Fillard for the SBC Media Network.